We just had the Disney Locana Q&A where we had more rulings confirmed and brand new cards reviewed, including a flatborn Coxworth. Let's jump right into it. Hi everyone, this is D Summon from Mushu Report and we've got six new cards this week that we definitely have to go through. Starting off right with the very start this week, we got the card I'm Stuck. The one card that just kept everyone thinking about that one certain video that they've seen long time ago. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's alright. I'm Stuck is a one cost action card for Amethyst and he has the ability Chosen Exerted Character can't ready at the start of their next turn. So it's a really nice card for the Amethyst deck, especially since previously you only had access to such an ability with Anna. And Anna had to use the ability if Elsa was already on the field, then you could target a character and it could not ready the next turn. And then now I'm Stark gets you that same ability at just one cost. So it's a really nice ability for Amethyst decks to have. Definitely makes me think that Amethyst is going to be staying on top of one of the meta decks for sure. And then next we have Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider Confident Vagabond is also a really nice new card. It's the one cost version of Olaf or Minnie Mouse for Emerald Inc. So it's a one cost, one tree, one law, and it is a Valina. But the main thing interesting about this card is the artwork. So in the artwork, you can actually see there's a tree. He's standing next to some wanted posters, which including one of them shows Flynn Rider, Charming Rogue, the two cost character for Flynn Rider that we got in the first chapter. And then there's another one single artwork that's shown over there that's not part of a wanted poster, which makes us think it's that gonna be a Floodborne version for Flynn Rider inside this Rise of the Floodborns. That's really interesting. I really think that we should look out for this one. And then we have the four cards that we got today, which are all pretty good. First up, we got Coxworth, Talking Clock. It's a two cost of fire character with two three stats and one law. So that's kind of the basic for Simba, Protective Cup, and also your Donald Duck. But this has a really nice ability where when it's on the board, your characters with Reckless all have Exert, Gain 1 Law. So this ability doesn't stack because they all have that same ability, Exert, Gain 1 Law. So even if you have multiple copies of Coxworth, they're all going to have that same ability, which is only Exerting to just Gain 1 Law. So take note on that. But the thing is going to make all your Reckless characters a lot more better from here because your Gaston Arrogant Hunter and your Maui Hero 2 all will now no longer just be stuck there either waiting for a character to challenge where they have to trade off or otherwise they just don't do anything because if your opponent doesn't have an exerted character for them to challenge, they basically can't do anything. But now with Coxworth, they'll be able to exert to gain one law, kind of like questing in a way. So it's a really nice ability for reckless characters to have. And then of course, this is for Sapphire Inc. So that makes me think is there going to be more reckless characters coming to Sapphire Inc. for this Rise of the Floodborne? Probably is. Let's look forward to it. And then Coxworth, of course, also got a Floodborne version, Coxworth Grandfather Clock, which is a really nice ability. It's a Floodborne Shift 3. It's a 5 cost, so with 2 5 stats and 2 law. So that's kind of similar to the Aurora Dreaming Guardian, just that one lesser strength. But the key difference here is, instead of Aurora Dreaming Guardian giving war to everyone, he actually has a ward for himself. Kind of like Donald Duck strutting his stuff, but the main thing here is that the ward for himself is one thing, and he even gives all your other characters resist plus one. That brand new keyword that reduces all the damage that all your other characters receive by one. That means all your characters will actually be very hardy. They'll be able to stay on the board a lot longer, which is really nice thing for the Sapphire Ink to have. So last week, we only had resist on Steel Ink with your Cinderella, Starhearted, and Tiana. So now we're actually having it for Sapphire Ink as well. I think that as a five cost that you can play in turn three, similar to Aura Dreaming Guardian, like as a Flatborn, with two law is something that's really nice for the deck to have. Okay, so aside from that, we have Bounce. It's a new 2 ink uninkable emerald card where it actually targets one of your characters to be bouncing back to hand and then after that, you can bounce one of uh, any other characters on the board, yours or the opponent's, back to hand as well. So this finally gives your Merlin Shapeshifter, you know, the one we got last week where every time a character returns from your board to your hand, you gain plus one law for him. So finally something that is really achievable for Merlin Shapeshifter to play with. But one interesting thing to note is that we actually got some early rulings for this card and it's already up on the wiki, which states that well, you don't have to have a second character on the board to activate this bounce action card. So what you can do is you can just target one of your own character. You must have that first character to bounce and return to hand. But if there's no other characters on the board, 
you don't have to choose that. But of course, if there's another character, you have to choose that one. So that's one new ruling that we got for Bounce. And the thing is that is this card better than Mother Knows Best? Mother Knows Best is a 3 cost card. This might be easier to use if you don't have to bounce your own card. You don't have to waste your ink to play your own characters again. But then Mother Knows Best is also a song card. So you can actually play it for free. I think Mother Knows Best is a better card still because that ball, well, there are Emerald Ink, one costs more, but yeah, both are uninkable anyway. So Mother Knows Best feels better to me, but of course, there's the combo factor of it where you get to use Merlin Shapeshifter or otherwise you just get to refresh your own characters because this is Emerald Ink. So we have cards like Genie on the job, which would definitely benefit from being able to be returned to hand. Then you can just play Genie on the job again to bounce another opponent's character back to hand. So that's Bounce. I think there's some interesting uses for this. Something to take note for. Then last but not least, we have The Prince Never Gives Up. He's a new bodyguard character for Steel Ink. Kind of similar to Hercules because he's also a 3 cost character with 1 tree stats but 2 law this time. So he has 2 lesser strength but then in return, aside from bodyguard, he actually has resist plus 1. So what does this mean? Well, people have been using Rafiki, mainly in general, to actually rush against Hercules. Then you can take out Hercules because both are 3-3 three, three characters. You know, they'll trade off against each other. But in this situation where if you have Rafiki going against this Prince Never Gives Up, well, Rafiki will stay alive. It will only take one damage. While your Prince Never Gives Up will take two damage and he will also still stay on the ball because of that resist plus one. So whether this card is better than Hercules is definitely up for debate. But for me, considering that he actually stays alive much longer because of the resist plus one and also he has two law, I actually think there are definitely some benefits to playing him since still is kind of a bit slow on the law gathering sometimes. There aren't that many low cost steel ink cards with two law. So I think this one definitely can have its play and definitely should be considered for part of a steel deck. So what do you guys think about all these new cards? Let me know in the comments below. But aside from all these, we also got some rulings that I mentioned earlier on. I think the most important ruling that we got from this Q&A is the confirmation that you couldn't give the another keyword to a character that already has the keyword. For example, in this case is for Gaston Arrogant Hunter. So the ruling asked was that whether Gaston Arrogant Hunter could be given another instance of Reckless via say for example the beast is mine because if that happened and now you have a Gaston Floodborne so what happens if you shift over the Gaston? Does that actually get the Reckless from the Beast is Mine? Well, now they actually gave a confirmation that because Gaston Arrogant Hunter already has Reckless, you cannot give another instance of Reckless through the Beast is Mine to Gaston Arrogant Hunter. And since he doesn't get the additional bit of Reckless, well, it doesn't get handed over to the new Gaston Floodborne. And yeah, so he will not have Reckless at all. So there's some new rulings to take note of. And there's quite a few other interesting rulings that you should definitely go and check out. All these are right now on the Mushu Report website. So go and read up and then get more familiar with the rulings. And that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you all enjoyed this very short video with the updates that we got this week. And yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is D Summon from Mushu Report, signing out.